Good morning, viewers, and welcome again to the program, Times of Refreshing. I am your TV host for this morning's program. I am Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph, and it's indeed an opportunity for me to carry on this morning's program. But before we meditate on God's word, we always take the opportunity to pray. Let us please pray. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Mighty God, we exalt your matchless name this morning. Father, we thank you, God, for the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same today. God, we give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you, God, because we are still in the land of the living. And great God, this is an opportunity, great God, to get closer to you, mighty God. Father, we bless your name this morning. Father, we dedicate this morning to you. We pray, oh God, that as we are about to go through your word, that you will bless God. You will teach God. You will allow the Holy Spirit to come down and teach us this morning. So God, we commit this morning's program into your hands again. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Are your lamps trimmed? It's a simple topic this morning. Are your lamps trimmed? And it's based on the discourse taken from Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 1 to 13. And it reads, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let me repeat that last verse. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Are your lamps trimmed this morning? The Bible is saying the kingdom of heaven will be likened unto ten virgins. It is not ten virgins, but it will be likened unto ten virgins. And he's using an analogy here. And he's saying that they took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom was coming to the banquet. He was coming to the marriage feast. And they took their lamps. But it's sad to say that five were wise and five were foolish. And the Bible goes on to say, the foolish took their lamps with no oil in them. People of God, Jesus is coming back. He is coming again. And the Bible is saying this morning that we ought to trim our lamps. We ought to get ready for his coming. We ought not to be foolish. The Bible goes on to say that the foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. How could a lamp function without oil? Likewise, how could we as people function without God? God is our everything. He was the one that created us. Our life doesn't have meaning if we don't have God in it. We are living lives without meaning. 
We are like ships without sail when we try to operate without Jesus or without God in our lives. He is our anchor. He is our compass. He is the one that directs our path. And like the foolish virgin, we try to operate and we try to live and think that we are enjoying life. Life without Jesus is no life. Let me say that to you again. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you are not experiencing the fullness of life. You are like the foolish virgins. The portion of scripture declares that they took their lamps without oil. How on earth would a lamp function without oil? We understand that in order to get light from your lamp, there must be something that gives energy. Something that, the, that fuels the lamp. That's the oil. The Bible is saying today that the foolish took their lamps. And I can imagine them with beautiful lamps going ahead, but it had no oil to put in it. We cannot live the fullness of life. We cannot experience it without Jesus. It will look like we are enjoying a measure. But if we really want to experience the full measure of this life on earth and the life to come, we must include our director. We must include our commander in chief. We must include the author of our lives, the one who keeps on writing the very chapters of our lives. We must include him. We must include him. This morning the Bible is saying, the foolish went without oil and they thought to themselves, yes, we are ready for the feast, only to realize that without oil in their lamps, their lamps are useless. Let me go on to say, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The wise are the people that read the word and they understand that this world was not formed by science. Atoms didn't collide with each other and form us. This world was made and designed by somebody who is greater than you and I. And he requires that I live my life according to his word and according to his precepts. The wise are the people who understand that and who order their steps after the word of God. They are the wise virgins in this life. They are the ones who take their lamps and they also take the oil. If ever a time we need the oil of the anointing, if ever a time we need the oil of the Holy Spirit is now. Let me inform you, it's now. We cannot operate without God. So many times we try to, but at the end of the day, we are failures. We cannot live successful lives without God in the equation. Let me tell you that this morning, what you are experiencing, experiencing now is not the fullness of life. Without God, you I will never, you will never experience the fullness of life. We can't forget God. That is why the Bible admonishes us that we ought to remember our creator in the days of our youth. Young people, God is calling you to a higher place of worship. God is calling you to surrender. Gone are the days where you think that church was for old people and sick people that did not have anything else to do. The Bible reminds us that he's looking for young people to remember him. Mm. Mighty God. The Bible said that the wise took oil in, took oil in their vessels. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The bridegroom was not there yet, but note that they all, all of us here need to abide until he comes. They all slumbered and slept. We all need to find a resting place. Mm, they all slumbered and slept while the bridegroom tarried. He was on his way. 
We are living in this world, but as believers, we are not of this world. We all have to live and abide until he comes. But the world system does not dictate our pace. Our pace is dictated by the word of God. If ever a time we are seeing double standards is now. People want to hold God in one hand and the world in one hand. But my Bible tells me that you ought to choose between God and mammon. Choose ye who you will serve this day. You must make a choice. You cannot serve the two. The Bible continues to say because you will either hate one and love the other. Let me continue. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom cometh. Let me inform you that our bridegroom is coming again. And there will be the sound of the trumpet signaling his return. There was a cry made, Go ye out to meet him. Hmm. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And here comes the foolish now without any oil, saying unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Your lamp cannot function without oil. Likewise, you cannot live a successful life without God. Said, Give us some oil. Give us some oil. That was indeed a foolish act. But the wise answered, say, not so. Lest when we give you some, we will not have enough for ourselves. They were not about to share. There was a time that they should have gone and bought the oil. Likewise, this is a time that the word of God is being spread throughout the world. I'm encouraging you, young man, young woman, as you listen to me this morning, hearken unto the word of God. Listen, because this is the time that the word of God is being distributed throughout the world. You will be without excuse. Because once you have heard the word, then you don't have an excuse. You made your choice not to serve God, but you heard the word. And it's important as ministers of the gospel that we spread the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's coming again. And he's not coming for everybody. He's coming for a prepared people. A people who is ready to meet the king. So that saying that Jesus is coming back for everybody, that's a myth. And it came from the pit of hell. It tells people that he's coming back for everybody so we just could live how we want. Let me inform you, that is not correct. My Bible still tells me that he is coming for a prepared people, a people that is ready to meet the king. So if you are foolish and you did not put oil in your lamp, know that when you try to light your lamp, it will not light. Hallelujah. He said, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. What a place to be in when God should come back to this earth and put in his appearance that you, you are found wanting. You did not give your life to Christ. You enjoyed all the things of this life and you did not set up your treasures in heaven. What a day that will be. What a day. The scripture still continues to say, what will it profit a man if he will gain the whole world and lose his soul? What will it profit you? What would you give in exchange for your soul when you would have gone the way of the world 
when you would have gone the way of mammon and did what you wanted and enjoyed the pleasures of this life for a season, what would it profit a man? Let me inform you today that you ought not to be a foolish virgin. You ought to be wise. You ought to put oil in your lamp because when the bridegroom who is Jesus Christ comes and puts in his appearance, you will not be found wanting. You will be in the right place at the right time with your lamps trimmed. Are your lamps trimmed this morning? Are you ready to meet the king? He's coming again. Let me inform you, he's coming again. Don't be like the foolish virgins when they try now to get in the door was shut. Don't allow the door of eternity to become shut in your face. Give your life to Christ. Surrender your all to him because he is coming back again and he's coming back very soon. Are your lamps trimmed this morning? You might be saying, since I was young, I've been hearing about the coming of Jesus Christ and he's still not here yet. Let me inform you that Jesus is coming again. He said, if I go to prepare a place for you, let me inform you that I will come again to receive you unto myself. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever God says in his word is that he will do. The Bible said he values his word above his name. If he says it, he will do it. If he declares it, he will perform it. Are your lamps trimmed this morning? Are you ready to meet with the bridegroom? Are you ready to meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? This mighty God who is not coming back as a babe in a manger, who is not coming back in swaddling clothes. Our God is coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming back as judge. Are you ready to meet with him this morning? Are you ready to meet with this great God today? The Bible said when they came knocking, the door was shut and they are now outside calling, Lord, Lord, open to us. He said, verily, verily, I know you not. The time that you should have been seeking my face and running after my word and doing my precepts you didn't do it now that the door has been shut you are now knocking he said don't even bother because i know you not mighty god what a place to be in and he continues to say but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not i don't know who you are you did not surrender your life to me do you want to hear those words at the end of time when the trumpet shall sound and our mighty God puts in his appearance as judge? Do you want to hear those words that I know you not? I don't think so. It will not be a nice place to be in. And the Bible continues to say, watch therefore. This is an encouragement to all of us, believers and non-believers, because as believers, we sin some time in thought, word, and in deed. Here the Bible is admonishing us this morning that we ought to watch. We ought not to sleep. Watch therefore, for he, knew, for he know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. This is sobering this morning. This is telling me that our lives must be ready at all times to meet with the king because you don't know the hour and the day that he's putting in his appearance. You don't know that if you try to live awkward, he might come that very moment and you will open the gates of hell. That's what the Bible is saying to you this morning and saying to me as a minister, watch therefore, keep your eyes on the eastern skies, keep your eyes on the prize because he's coming again and no man 
knoweth the day, no man knoweth the hour that he will put in his appearance. So whenever you hear some of these people going around in our society and saying Jesus is coming tomorrow and Jesus is coming next week, know that that is a lie from the pit of hell. My Bible tells me that no man nor the day, nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let me encourage you as I encourage my own life that our lives need to be pure and holy awaiting the coming of our bridegroom. Our lives need to line up with the word of God. This is not the time, nor the day, nor the season to play religion. It's a time to be the church and not play the church, but be the church. Live holy. And to those of you who don't know this Jesus that I'm speaking about this morning, it's the time is now for you to surrender your life because the bridegroom is on his way. He's coming. Do you want to be left out from the banquet? Do you want to be on the outside like the foolish virgins knocking and wanting to come in? Do you want to hear, depart from me, I know you not? I don't think so this morning. That is why I'm here, to encourage you, to let you know that all is not lost, that Jesus still loves you, and he still desires that men surrender. He said that hell was not designed for people, it was designed for the devil and his angels. Come on, don't go to a place that was not designed for you. His desire is that when he comes again, he will receive you unto himself. But let me inform you, you must be prepared to go with this great king. You, your life must be ordered after his word. The Bible must be your benchmark for living. Let me encourage you that God still honors righteousness. God still honors faithfulness and holiness. So as you listen to me this morning, make a decision to surrender. It's the best decision that you will make in this life. This life is short. And you need to give this bridegroom a chance in your life this morning. You need to give him a chance. You need to surrender. You have tried everything else. Let me encourage you today to try Jesus. Give him a chance in your life. And don't allow him to come. And you are there knocking on the outside and not on the inside with the bridegroom before the banquet feast. Let me encourage you again. Surrender your life to him today it's the only way it's the best way if you want to live a successful life if you want to enjoy the fullness of life both here and in the life to come you need to surrender your life to jesus you need to give him a chance today before i close i always like to take the opportunity to pray for my viewers Father, we give you thanks today. Great God, we give you praise. God, we thank you for those people that view morning by morning. We pray, great God, for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior. We pray, God, that they will make a decision today. Today is the day of salvation. That they will make a decision today to surrender and to serve you. And they will experience the fullness of of life in this life and in the life to come I pray God for the young men and the young women oh God even for the adults my God I pray God that they're gonna turn around their lives today and they will understand that you love them so much that you died for us God I pray today God that the soberness of this message will reach them where they are 
And they would surrender their lives to you this morning. So God, I commit your views. I commit Tobago. I commit Trinidad by extension, great God. Oh God, let the spirit of salvation run through our nation from corner to corner and village to village, causing men and women to surrender to you. Great God, just have your way, God, in our land. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mighty God. I am Minister Sherla Waldron Joseph. And it was indeed a privilege being here with you another morning. But before I go, let me encourage you again to surrender. Young people, young people in Trinidad and Tobago, they are dying by the droves. I'm calling on young people to surrender their lives to Jesus today. He is the only way. He is the best way. I guarantee you that you would not regret that decision. It will be the best decision that you would have ever made. Surrender your life to him today. Give him a chance to turn your life around. You cannot do it for yourself. But I know a man called Christ Jesus. He's able to make every crooked path straight. He's able to smoothen every rough edges, all the rough edges in our life. There's nothing that God cannot do. All he needs you to do is open your life. He's a gentleman. If you don't open your life to him, he would not come in. He's knocking at your heart door. And all he's asking you today is to open your heart door to him. And he will come in and sup with you. And he will give you the life that you desire. So until then, I pray that the peace of God and the blessings of God will follow you and your household. In Jesus' name, amen.